Okay, go ahead. Okay, so welcome everybody. Um, I'm glad you can make it. It's uh, this is the, the the meeting place of this the new Starbucks uh, Zoom, and uh, the. There, there's never enough lead time, and I apologize for always getting stuff out uh, under the gun, but I'm really glad that you can be a part of this. Um, the, the app development process is, is something that we'll talk about, but I just want to say real quick that the engagement factor and preparing kids for the jobs that we have no idea are, are going to be uh in in play when they graduate this really is that entrepreneur uh way of thinking and i think that's that's they get a cool lap out of it but i think the the biggest benefit is the design thinking process that you'll see as we go through and we'll, we'll show a little bit of the apps so you can see the content integration as well and Maribel, if you have some ideas about uh, about incorporating biliteracy into this, then please share. Definitely. Um, thank you, Jim. And um, I, we're so we're so glad to be here. Um, Jim is one of our newest uh, partners, of course, in Illinois, and uh, we're so glad that Madlearn is now partnered with Grace Education to bring app development into schools in the Chicago land area. So we're really excited to be here, and thank you, Jim and Rochelle, uh, for coordinating this and bringing us all together. And for those watching later as well, uh, really, really excited to be meeting you hopefully soon, virtually and in person when we're able to. Um, I'm Alethea Master. I am the founder and CEO of Madlearn, um, and I have with me my wonderful colleague, Greg Stone, who is uh, a longtime veteran educator and been with our, our program and our company since before day one. Um, so he and I uh, love, love working with teachers and um, figuring out how we can empower students in meaningful ways. So uh, without further ado, I will hand over to Greg, and Greg, I know, wants to share with us, give us a little bit of a brief background and overview of what Madlearn is. So if you have not yet gotten your license please go to mad-learn.com slash COVID-19 and I'll put that link in the chat as well um, but just, it's our website mad-learn.com slash COVID-19 and we do have free access to MadLearn now available for any teacher student or parent to use during school closures and as Greg is pointing that out there it is right there on our home page as well so if you haven't gotten your free access to MadLearn yet please go ahead and register for that we'll get that to you right away um, but here's Greg to show us a little bit more about the program take it away Greg. Well, thank you. Um, this is the web page uh, that you land on uh, when you come to Mad Learn at any time. It's simply mad-learn.com, as you can see at the top there. And you can see a, a wealth of information just on the home screen here of our website, including uh, what Jim referred to earlier, the uh, design thinking process uh, that uh, the curriculum that we have follows. It goes from coming up with an idea, uh, attacking a problem that might be confronting your community or a need uh, in some way, planning out a product, designing it, building it, testing it, and ultimately launching it. Um, and that is what Mad Learn is all about. The building of the mobile app is really a vehicle that's used to teach this process, and you get so many great uh, skills developments that come out of this, this process. And so that's why we use it. When you get logged into uh, the program, it'll take you to what we call the dashboard. And here you'll see apps that have been created. You'll see all kinds of other things here. Teachers um, have, for example, access to the curriculum uh, for Mad Learn. Uh, and if you click on the curriculum button, it'll take you to uh, an option for either um, uh, going to, uh, excuse me, I'm getting ahead of myself here for a second. Um, it'll give you the option to have an elementary or secondary uh, group of resources that follow these six steps or these six units for the program. Um, and uh, when, you, when you do that, um, you'll see a hierarchical listing of uh, resources that are available, everything from presentation slide decks to 
uh, tutorials and various activities and background information even for teachers themselves. One of the great things that we have for the students and teachers uh, are not just tutorials that are static, that is uh, in the form of slide deck presentations, but we also have a library of video tutorials. There are about 32 of them that take you from step one in the process, introducing MadLearn, all the way to the end uh, in testing it and launching the product. And so these video tutorials, and you can see that on average, these run around two minutes apiece. Uh, they're very useful for the, for the students. We've also developed a, what we call a 10 step program. And this has been very valuable, especially now that we're all working remotely, including all the students uh, that people have. Um, we have set up something that allows the students to have a, a really strong introduction to the program and the app building process uh, and be able to do it on their own. We've, we've come up with this 10 step plan that the students can access by simply clicking on the purple banner at the top of the dashboard that you may have seen there. And you'll see what each lesson is in the 10 step process, a brief description of it, and then the recommended video tutorials and other resources that students can link to directly to lead them through the process and be able to um, do what they uh, want to do with this. Um, the, um, the, the apps that are created by students are informational apps. Uh, that is to say they are not gaming apps. Nobody's building the next Minecraft or anything like that. They're building informational apps and we're trying to encourage students to be social entrepreneurs. That is to build apps that would be helpful to their community, whether that be their school or their neighborhood or even the whole world for that matter. And um, I just pulled up as an example, uh, a list of uh, of uh, apps here that have been created by a school outside of Atlanta called the Lovett School, uh, where they did a project about refugees. Um, and they wanted to tell the stories of the refugees and then give a bigger picture of what it's like to have to go through that. And they each uh, built apps about these. And um, I'm gonna just preview this online. We're not gonna be able to see all of the features because the online preview uh, doesn't do that for you. And I'll explain in just a moment how you get that full functioning version of these apps um, on any device, uh, whether it be an Android phone, an iPhone, or even an iPad. Uh, but this is an app that was created by one of these students. And you can see that they are, they've been able to do a, a lot of things here. Um, they've been able to uh, speak to individual experiences of different um, uh, refugees and put these on the app. They've also done some things though, like uh, they've, they've got photo galleries uh, with, with great uh, captions here, for example. They even created, uh, some, most of the students created an iMovie uh, that talked to their experience of building uh, this app and doing the project. And that can be accessed just by clicking on this and opening it up in iTunes within the app itself. They've even uh, created naturalization questions, quizzes here. Uh, for the end user to take uh, to help them better understand what uh, a, a, a refugee might go through coming into the United States. This app also has an element called a choose your adventure element. And uh, here you have a choice to leave with your family or leave on your own. And depending on what you're choosing, uh, you go into a next step and that will tell you uh, how things are going for you as a refugee and in your experience, putting you in the, in the shoes of the refugee themselves. And this is something that these apps can do, not only in a way that the students have figured out to organize it uh, you know, creatively and effectively and in, in an engaging way, but also because it's on a mobile app, the end user can do this anywhere at any time. And it's uh, so anytime, anywhere learning, which is great. Uh, this app even has a feedback uh, screen on it for the end user to share their uh, experiences in using the app with the creator of the app. Now, some of these screens are very easy to create. It's a simple matter of plugging in a website address, for example, for the YouTube videos that you saw. Um, it could be a matter of just bringing in uh, photos from your computer to put onto the photo gallery. But some of the screens also involve written, actual written code. And uh, for those types of screens, and let me just show you what one looks like um, as an example. Um, 
some screens are made with these actual written codes that are a combination of HTML with CSS and JavaScript working together. So in this app that we've been looking at, this is what the, the uh, under the hood version of this app looks like actually. Uh, when, you're, when you're in the platform itself, you're building these screens, you add them one at a time and save them and then link them, of course, to the buttons that they come from. So for example, um, if we had, uh, here's one of the HCJ uh, builder uh, screens. Um, and this is the uh, naturalization quiz or one of the two that are within this app. And when you open up this, you're gonna see that there are three fields here for actual written code. Now this might seem overwhelming uh, and, and look like it might be too much for students to be able to pull off. Uh, but actually we approach this in a three tiered uh, manner. And I'm not sure why the code isn't coming up on this. Let me try uh, the other H, uh, HCJ screen and see if it does. And while you're pulling that up, Greg, I just, I wrote this in the chat, but I just want to say it out loud as well. Um, before you worry about code, because I know many of us may not be computer science teachers or do not know how to code, please know that I don't know how to code. And I started and run a tech company. Greg does not know how to code. And now he does a little bit because he's learned a little bit so over the last say, few months. You need to take um, that back now because I am learning. <laughs> but <laughs> Thanks to this. We built this specifically for us as adults and teachers who do not have that background and can introduce it to our students and for students who don't know how to code but are learning it or wanting to get into it or wanting to experiment and explore with it. So you could build a whole app from start to finish without writing a line of code or as you get more advanced, you could have the kids go into this and actually do some coding as well. So there's lots of tiers, lots of levels, not anything to worry about at all. I promise if I can make an app, you can too. And I would say the same thing, and that's been my experience too. Um, we have supplied for students a, a library of about 70 different code sets that the students can access. So for example, if they wanted to make a quiz, they don't, know, they don't have to know how to write the code. They can just go into the quiz folder and find uh, one of the several code sets for quizzes that are there. And uh, we've highlighted, for example, the content parts of the, of the code so that they know exactly what has to be changed as far as the content goes. The, therefore, leaving all the rest of it intact so the functionality remains the same. It's just that the questions and answers are different uh, now. And if you take a look at some of the apps uh, that are on our Mad Store app, uh, you'll see some of these play out. And speaking of the Mad Store app, um, I, I want to talk about that. If you, if you don't already have it uh, on your device, uh, we ask you to download uh, from your either your Apple App Store or from the Google Play Store an app called Mad Store. Um, it's a free app, of course, and this is kind of a launch pad for any apps that are made on our system. And apps that, are, that students are creating can either be fully published, as you're seeing apps here on the online version of Mad Store, um, or they can even be viewed on devices at any point in time while the students are building the apps because they can uh, have a, a, a randomly generated nine-digit code assigned to their app and when they plug that into the Mad Store app, they'll be able to uh, view their app in a fully functioning way. Um, and so if you don't have the Mad Store app, please do take a look at it. Take a look at some of the featured apps. There's some really interesting things in here. The Two Voices app uh, is, is a really good one because it's an experiential um, uh, app that was, that was created. I like the Sleep Helper app because it's actually got some files in there uh, in the app that uh, have white noise type things and, and, and what have you and great suggestions about how to sleep. Uh, but these are all apps that have been created by students. There are a few sprinkled in that, that we created as well. Um, but uh, the, the uh, and, and we did them just for demonstrative purposes. Um, and and Greg, uh, otherwise, you've got, you've got a lot to look at here, so. And Greg, may I request you to pull up the Lost in a Book app just really quickly? Um, I know we have several literacy folks on the webinar today and ones that may be watching later. Jim, would you mind if you could go off mute? Tell us uh, a little bit about why you like the Lost in a Book app so much um, and some, some interesting integrations that you see with potentially building an app in your English class. 
and you're on mute. Uh, okay. There you go. And in, instead of doing a book report, I mean, this could be like a book review, um, but this is an app that talks about the book, the author, um, the genre, uh, summary, characters, uh, conflict, resolution. So they're really getting into the aspects of dissecting that book um, in a way that is, is shareable. So again, this is like something that's not just for the teacher, though a teacher will be very happy to get something like this as uh, a finished product. Um, but also this is helpful for if kids were to do this and recommend different books and just use this as a template for book reviews and uh, kids could see a lot more than just a description of what, you know, uh, somebody would say about the book and, and the parts that they liked and why they liked it. So it, it does allow for that uh, content integration. And I really see that you can't separate the two. Um, it's not just about building an app. It's about addressing an issue, be it refugees, be it, you know, the kids come up with it. The kids drive it with their ideas, which is, is the powerful piece of that choice. And Olivia, if I can just put one more thing in there. It does allow them to collaborate with other schools, other classes, other you know, parts of the world on different projects. So that one I would say would probably be more of the third, fourth grade. When you get into two voices, the writing there is so creative and so descriptive that it's amazing. I, mean, I was just blown away by the description and, and the pathways. This is like a choose your own adventure um, piece where it's a, a daughter and her father and it shows you the pictures and um, they have decisions to make whether they obey the guards or not. And it's kind of two different journeys through the Nazi occupation uh, as they were gathering people up to go to concentration camps. So I would say this would be a, a certainly on the higher grade side, mm -hmm. but the, when you look at the, the writing style, I was blown away. And these are, Jim, you're right. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing. And these are middle school. This was actually a team of middle school girls who created this app a couple years ago in their history class. Um, and I had the wonderful opportunity of meeting these girls at a conference, of course, not in this time, um, but it was last year at a conference and they came and they said, oh my gosh, you're the, you're the, the company that we built our app with. And they were thrilled to share their experience. They're in high school now and they actually are incorporating their app development experience and this two voices app that they built into their college applications and writing about that experience and what they created and how they did that um, their teacher actually we have a great video of him on our website um, he talks about how his kids learn more in that uh, class in in terms of learning about the Holocaust when they built an app than they had ever had uh, prior just because it was such a, a creation uh, experience for the students even in their history class so um, thank you Jim for sharing that uh, Greg back to you Okay, thank you. I really don't have much else to say. I know we have limited time, and I didn't want to take too much time up. Um, I wanted to just give you at least a, a taste of, of what this looks like and, and how students go about it. Um, uh, it's, it's been an exciting uh, time in working with the company and uh, watching the students do what they do. As Alephia said, these, these seventh grade girls uh, came up with the idea for the um, uh, the Two Voices app, and, and what blew me away about it was, and, and all of us really, is that it came at a time when we didn't even realize that the platform elements that we had in place could do something like that. Um, we didn't know that it could happen, but the students figured it out, and they did it, and we've gone on now to create Choose Your Own Adventure apps, and other students have, 
that both mirror that, but also use the new uh, code-based uh, uh, template that we created. Uh, so there are different ways to go about it now, but it's just wonderful to see how these kids can take existing elements and, and uh, manipulate them into being something completely different and something magical. So it's been, it's been a lot of fun to watch. Thank yeah. you. Greg. Thank you so much for sharing. And I'd love to, to open it up for questions. Any questions that, uh, that we have, things that you're wondering about, if you've already requested licenses and have gotten a chance to log into MadLearn, if you have some specific questions, feel free to ask us. We'd love to help with those. Um, but if not, just general ideas, questions that you might like to share with us. We're, we're here to help. And if you do, and I'm actually going to go ahead, Jim, go ahead. Did you have a question, Jim? Yeah, yeah. Well, I was wondering, there, there's also, just since I've been a part of, of this group, um, the, the platform has evolved where there's augmented reality filters that uh, kids can use. And just being able to easily integrate that into, into an app. And again, I think having a having a, a real audience for these is is powerful. So the Madlearn store being able to showcase that all over, and uh, you're going to tell me to be quiet, Alifia. But uh, if you, Young Zhao is is one of my my favorite people, and he's all about product base learning. So not just for a project, for a class, but for a wider audience. And because it's a global economy that an app like this that costs four ninety five on the app store can make people incredibly wealthy. Um, even if it's just a small percentage of the population that's interested in that, it really allows them to experience what I think the job market is, is going to be like. Um, so yeah, that's, I'll stop with that. I could talk all day about Young Zhao, but. No, thank you. And I am going to go ahead and stop our recording, but we're going to stay on to answer any questions that Maribel and Jackie have. Um, but again, thank you everybody for being here. Thank you for watching for those of us who will be watching later. And if you're in the Chicagoland area, or you're interested in bringing app development to your students, especially during this time when schools are closed and we're at home, please get in touch with us. Jim Burnett is right there with Grace Education. Um, you hopefully know him already. And if not, please reach out to him um, so that we can get you started. And again, the website is mad-learn.com slash COVID-19. So thank you everybody for watching and have a wonderful and safe rest of the day. Thanks everyone.